Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 78 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous episode, uploaded only about two days ago, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. Like I said, episodes now coming a little bit quicker in succession on the channel compared to the first four episodes, and we're here at our well, favourite place of mine, and we come off the back of a really strong result in in Azerbaijan at Baku of course pole position it was our first pole in a long long while and we somehow converted that despite you know how the first part of the race went even in the middle you know middle parts where it was looking a bit sketchy we converted that to a win it wasn't an easy one it wasn't pole to the win you know leading the entire way but slowly but surely we came through the ranks after having to take a bit of avoiding action of course remember in the opening laps and of course other people kind of tripping over themselves and it was a bit of a survival out there of Azerbaijan but we made it through, uh, we just didn't quite get the fast half of the Grand Prix, I think that was stolen away from us by Valtteri Bottas there in P9 in the dying lap, so it wasn't quite the grand slam, but I'm still very very happy, like I said, it's a rarity that we're actually on pole position, I'm not much of a qualifier, and the AI generally speaking, in the last I would say three games, have been you know quite good at qualifying versus the race, they're generally always faster over one lap, but like I said, I've never been one to be that great on Saturday. Doing the best on Sunday though and it means we're leading the way in the championship going into this one. Carlos Sainz in second place after a last lap overtake to get fifth place there. Puts himself only seven points behind us. So you know despite Ferrari while well, his teammate being nowhere on this page of results, uh, Sainz is leading the way and showing Ferrari could battle for at least the driver's championship but I think with Ricardo doing so poorly I don't think there's any way they can battle for the constructors. But in terms of the conductors fight for us. Leclerc is there in the in the top three, so it's another strong season for us and our my team uh, uh, team. Obviously, in that uh, that part of the standing. Speaking of though, teammates not doing so well. We have a look at the focus levels just to get an insight. Gasly still very highly rated despite uh, being quite poor versus Sonoda this season so far. Both McLaren drivers highly focused. Russell over 91 focus there, and Sainz, despite only 76 focus, is doing that well in the Ferrari versus. So, you know, Russell in an equally kind of quick McLaren with 91. So Sainz has really had maybe the rub of the green as well this season so far. And maybe Russell's, in fact, underperforming in that McLaren in a way. We've seen clearly so far this season, very much like others, the both teammates, they're struggling to be at the same level. You know, this season we've got Russell ahead of Lando and the McLaren. Uh, the Alpha Tauris have surprisingly switched, despite Gasly still having, I think, over, well over 80 focus and looking pretty good. You can just clearly tell that the vibe is Sonoda's looking stronger right now. Whether that changes later in the season remains to be seen but you know we've seen this pattern that there's I've, I've not seen yet, we've not seen yet an AI team of two AI teammates be as strong as one another. The only case that's happened is when obviously it's there's not been one, uh, there's only been one AI involved and the other one is myself you know. This uh, on this year's game I think more so than other games the, our AI teammate has been so, so strong. There's been so many points where I've, you know, doubted if I can beat my teammate, you know, Perez, Schumacher. Uh, well, we did get beaten thoroughly by Button to the championship. He won it there. So, you know, the teammates have been really strong this year, but it's also meant... AI versus AI, one of them has to be the weaker one. And when that happens, it seems to be quite a dramatic one for some reason. Kind of mimicking real life, because uh, in real life Formula 1, I think we've seen that uh, in the last two years, that there's been a big, bigger discrepancy sometimes between teammates where the skill gap is showing a lot more at the end of this kind of, you know, this era of the V6 period. So uh, peculiar stuff, but it translates over into the game kind of nicely. We've been delving into the race weekend, just getting through the kind of formality of Q1, really whilst we've been discussing that, and Sonoda going top of the session, showing once again he's looking pretty strong, but to say that you know, Alpha Tower is a, as a whole, as a team, they've just been operationally so poor, a bit unlucky maybe as well, and they're really, they've got nothing to show for it really so far in terms of points this season, so it's all well and good being quick on Saturday, but they're not converting it on Sunday, either with Sonoda or Gasly, Leclerc looking pretty good though, he was up there in P2, but uh, I'm hoping we can carry some of this confidence, I, I definitely gained some confidence in getting the pole at Baku. That was a surprise to me, but um, I, I, you know, I think we can go well around here. Uh, again, kind of carry that 
through that, you know, almost like real life focus of, of my own in a way. And obviously you've got to remember that this is one of my favorite circuits on the F1 game, but getting held up a little bit by Schumacher there into the last chicane was hesitant to really commit uh, to chucking the car in because wasn't really sure where Schumacher was going or how slowly he was going to go. But thankfully, no issue. We do get through into the top 10 shooter. And so we have another chance to be trying bag another surprising pole position. Maybe, I don't know. We'll have to see the pace. It looks like pre it's pretty damn close. You know, only one tenth separating the top five here. Gasly, though, is uh, fast of all. And Sonoda, to say he was looking quick then, we just heaped all this praise on him. He's knocked out. So the commentator's curse is very much coming out in full force, it would seem, because Sonoda's knocked out. Uh, Ricardo is. Bottas is. And again, Guan Yu Zhou being the team leader at Williams uh, so far this season in P6. Both McLarens through with the Red Bulls as well. And Verstappen drags that Merck into the top ten, whereas his team at Hamilton and he was knocked out a long time ago in Q1. All but a formality for him to not make it through into Q2, basically, these days in the career mode. Again, a bit of a surprise to see both Red Bulls up there. Um, but, you know, that, that's kind of the fault of, you know, the likes of one of the Alpha Tauris not doing the job and getting through and knocking one of them out, as they were doing a lot of the time last season. But now, anyway, we're through into this shootout, and it's time to focus on that because I'm feeling good. I think we could actually aim for a very lofty grid position let's see what the first one's saying bit of understeer and general lack of you know uh, a good line I would say through that hairpin really I think I took a bit of a too tight of a line in the hairpin so this time in the second run looking to improve at the moment we're P3 so it's still pretty damn good even though I was disappointed at that first run red first sector green in the second we're two and a bit tense up here so that hairpin made a massive difference to that you could see you know that's a ma massive margin to gain in just one corner as we fly through the last chicane. A little bit of time lost actually on the entry point there is where we've gone down to 1.8 tenths gain and we're oh, narrowly narrowly just going to miss out on pole position there. Leclerc was right behind me on his flying lap and I don't think he actually got a good lap in. No he did not. So much to the team's dismay kind of split way to think about that. We're on the front row only four thousandth behind Guan Yu Zhou the Williams driver on pole position how about that? The, the more junior Chinese driver on pole, you know, the, the man who was looking the quickest out of everyone in Formula 1 last season in Season 4, knocked out in Q2 and the other Williams. And then for, for ourselves, Leclerc, like I said, I think he was on a flyer right behind me. So even though I was improving, I guess he was getting my dirty air. And that made a massive difference when he got a grid that's, you know, all got maxed out cars. And so Leclerc way down in P10. He'll be so frustrated with that. Norris, up in P4, Sainz again just there all the time in the top five with the Ferrari and Giovinazzi as well. Verstappen's done exceptionally well to get the Mercedes ahead of Russell uh, I think more so, more just disappointment from Russell's side, not to be higher really, and then Schumacher and Gasly finish out the top ten, not too much to talk about with them, but uh, for us I mean, this is good, it's not pole position, but it's still awesome to be on the front row in back-to-back -back episodes, that hasn't happened in a long while either, so could we try Try and repeat the vibe from Baku and try and convert a front row to a very decent podium or even go for the win today. Hopefully I could do one of my favourite circuits. Let's go to the grid. Bonjour. It's time once again to go racing here in Montreal, the second largest French-speaking city in the world and home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous Wall of Champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. Alongside me to discuss all the action today is Anthony Davidson. Thanks for joining us, Ant. And tell me, you were down in the pit lane earlier. How do you think the track conditions are today? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Guan Yu Zhou lines up on pole position and the owner driver alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Norris, Sainz, Antonio Giovinazzi and Verstappen, Russell, Mick Schumacher, Gasly and Charles Leclerc, Sonoda, Ricardo, 
Valtteri Bottas and Ocon, Stroll, Eilert, Lewis Hamilton and Jack Aitken, Mazepin, Latifi, Matsushita and Christian Lungard. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. The Canadian Grand Prix is already quite exciting with the strategy. It's a two-stop normally in the drive from softs to two sets of medium tyres, but it's going to be a bit more interesting today because we've also got a bit of a rain, a bit of a, a surprise one, because we've got, look, it starts sunny and it's all fine, a little bit cloudy, then gets overcast, and right at the end of the race, that's a heavy rain symbol. So whether it's going to get to full wets or it's just a dramatic, like, one lap it's dry, one lap it's inters, and everyone's going to be screwed, I don't know, but... That's going to be, well, uh, interesting to say the least. Probably a bit of a, of a mess when it comes to the pit stops and when we come in. But everyone's in the same boat. So let's try and see what we can do from the front row here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. We get to five red lights on the front row alongside Guan Yu Zhou off the back of a race win. Can we continue this streak? Five red lights are out and we're on the way. It's a fantastic start for us. What an electric jump. And Guan Yu Zhou's had a mare into turn one though. Oh, Oh, Giovinazzi's come out of nowhere and he's hit the side pod of us. What is going on here? That turned into, well, from a fantastic star to a nightmare because I'm pretty sure we've got floor damage. What was Giovinazzi doing there? He came literally out of nowhere. I think he was P4 by the time Guan Yu Zhou got swamped off pole position. Tragedy for the Chinese driver off pole. You know, just basically, it looked like he almost, he almost stalled in a way. But yeah, we've got, uh, well, not, not even floor damage. I think that's like internal, like, more kind of side pod damage even because that's the inside bit. Uh, very peculiar. I don't have damage on the outside bit on the heads-up display, but on the inside I do. So I think that's kind of technically meant to mean more kind of side pod damage than the floor damage. So potentially we might have even cooling issues in terms of the engine overheating a little bit. But I don't know what Giovinazzi was doing because he, he came out of nowhere. You can see on the left-hand side in the mirror... He just makes a dive that was never going to come on to it. And we're just trying to take the apex. And uh, we face some damage. I was hoping we'd get away with everything. It seemed like we did. But that was always going to be very wishful thinking in terms of with the simulation damage. You know, you, you've seen how sensitive it's been sometimes A on an AI. Let alone an AI basically T-boning me. Uh, or attempting to into turn one. So, you know, after such, I was feeling so happy in the initial few seconds when we got the launch. Because Guan Yu Zhou had a howler. But then it, it's all kind of crumbling down. Because we've got a whole race ahead of us. A whole Grand Prix. And we've got this damage which is going to... Uh, you know, one, give us drag, and then also, because it's the side pod inside bit of the floor uh, towards the side pod, I think also my engineer is saying that I'm going to have a bit of cooling issue, maybe, potentially. So, we've not really had that before. I think, you know, we maybe faced a little bit of it at Monaco way back in, like, Season 2, for example, but we've never just had that part of the of the floor break. We've always had the outside bit. Now, at the hairpin, as we're defending against Guan Yu Zhou and Sainz, Sainz off into P2, but Ricardo's out. Eilat's out, Ocon's out, it's now 3 wide for the lead, Hamilton's out the Grand Prix, Aiken, but it's 3 wide for the race lead, and Guan Yu Zhou is into the lead of the Grand Prix in the Williams, good dive bomb by him, of course we are a bit defenceless, I can't break as late as them because I don't have the, the downforce mid-corner, you've got uh, Latifi out, Mazepin out, he's been disqualified, we've had two disqualifiers here, what is going on that hairpin, you saw the mini-map, whilst we're defending against the Ferrari and the Williams, clearly there was some sort of pile-up there, but we, we don't know what quite yet. And then whilst we're kind of confirming all the people that were out the Grand Prix, uh, we had a three-wide moment, a really nice one, to be fair, between Sainz, myself, and Joe. But, um... The Williams able to, to get down the inside and the Ferrari able to swoon through on the left-hand side here. We've got DRS off, off the Williams, so we try our best to, to counteract the Ferrari. But into the next corner, the chicane, the Ferrari just has much better, uh, well, a turn in, I would say. Even though he went wide, you know, they all have better turn in than me. Because even though the, the floor damage doesn't affect the initial braking, it affects as soon as you start to turn the car just does not like it. And Verstappen now is going to take advantage. Down the inside he goes. But he's nearly die bombed himself off the circuit. What's going on? And Russell's now overtaken us. Absolute mayhem here at Montreal. Everyone's just sending it. Oh, did I miss a memo about kamikaze dives? 
you know, uh, this race because Verstappen is literally, he's he sent it so hard that he went off circuit and he's now not only behind me again, he's behind Russell, Schumacher, Leclerc and even both Alpha Tauri's. He's down to P9 now because he got that so wrong in his Mercedes car. And that's all because he just fancied overtaking me. And I, I was obviously letting him through kind of almost on the inside. But we tried to defend a little bit. But then I knew I could see it in my mirrors. It was a Giovinazzi V2. So I got out of the way. But <laughs> that was very peculiar. I've never seen an AI dive themselves off the circuit. But there you go. The more you know. So uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a bloodbath here at Montreal. As we've only got 14 runners now. So, you know. We're already four DNFs off. There being a total of everyone finishing gets a point in this race. Kind of mad. Lap number seven, though. We're looking to try and keep up with Russell. Lap eight, we come in. Russell stays out then. So we come in along with Sainz and I think uh, Joe as well in the Williams. But uh, you can see there our engine is a bit hot. It's yellow, 138 degrees. So our engine is actually overheating a little bit due to this damage. So that's going to affect the straight line speed. So that's also perhaps why I've been looking very vulnerable on these straights into these brake zones. Not only do I not have the confidence now on the braking in mid-corner, it's actually just the straight line speed that they'll be able to go a little bit quicker uh, on the straight, on that last little bit, maybe when the engine's pushing hard because of my overheating. And Bottas gets ahead of us just about. We're going to try and jock him for position and scrap him, but the Williams just gets plainly ahead of us, and I actually start to understeer through that right-hander, having to remember I need to break basically a little bit earlier for every corner, but momentarily I thought, okay, I can just turn in at that point, and it just wasn't going to work, so now we have to try and chase after and keep up with the Williams. I mean, it would be fantastic if we could keep up with him, but I think right now, as was the case, remember, wasn't it last season where we had Leclerc have that upside down, down moment? We broke our floor here at Montreal. What is it about Montreal breaking my floor? Um, but, you know, we, we learned then with the, the way the game physics works. When I've got fresh tyres, the damage isn't actually that bad. But once the tyres start to go off, then I'm going to feel it. So right now, I'm somewhat keeping up with Bottas. We're fighting Russell and we just got ahead of him there. So we actually undercut Russell. Very nicely, in fact. And by the way, if you didn't know, Bottas and Norris, they hit a lot earlier than everyone else. I don't know if they had damage or whatever, but they were a lot earlier in for that first pit stop. So they actually may come in earlier again for the second one and may jeopardize their own race if the rain is to come. But at the moment, trying our best to keep both the McLarens behind. We've been keeping Norris at bay so far. Russell, though, comes charging through. We're deploying ERS, opening DRS, but it's no use. Russell's alongside is still he's got a DRS of course and the McLaren is going to have the better entry into the chicane but we actually do very well to just keep it ahead in P6 uh, P5 at the moment P4 as we've now got some pit stops there so at the moment we're a bit of a cork in the bottle right now for the McLarens how long can we keep this up I don't know but it's uh, Guan Yu Zhou and the Williams from Sainz, Bottas in third, myself P4, maybe for not much longer though, because now lap 7, uh, well 12, now I don't have DRS or Bottas, so I'm a sitting duck to not only Russell, but maybe even Norris, as he has a cheeky look on the inside, we defend, and we're going to keep uh, P5, but um, pretty much now, yeah, a sitting duck, if I don't have DRS, I'm a sitting duck, because that engine overheating, I think, is actually a bigger issue than you maybe think it might be, so lap 15 here, uh, as it gets a bit overcast now, remember, it is going to get overcast and then start raining. But this is a lot earlier than I thought. I thought it was going to get overcast by lap 20, 25. So this may indicate the rain's coming sooner rather than later because it just keeps on getting darker and darker. The clouds over the circuit and ahead, as we squint our eyes to look ahead, we can see Russell overtaking Bottas on the inside. The McLaren is up into P3 and Russell is once again showing to be looking so good in the McLaren this season. Norris, you know, looked so strong in previous seasons. He's just struggling a little bit versus Russell on this one. And Bottas, well, he's struggling a little bit, really, because his teammate's out there leading, whereas he's been getting caught by McLaren. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But at the moment, not much to report from us. We can't keep up with those two. I think it's a miracle right now. We're even 1.4 seconds behind Bottas. But that's just because he's lost time to, uh, you know, battling Russell. Look how far up the road Russell is now on the minimap. So Bottas just losing pace. Remember, he pit earlier, like I said. So him and Norris may be coming in. 
in earlier. Yes, they are. They are coming in. But look at the, uh, on the left-hand side, a rain droplet. So Bottas and Norris and whoever else came in earlier, uh, they're all pitting for another set of mediums, I would say. But it's starting to rain. So they're going to get screwed over massively now because the rain is on the way. We don't know quite when. It's going to take a fair few laps, like 21. So, you know, yeah, at least uh, three, four laps where the rain was starting to fall. But only now does it look wet enough and I can actually feel it in my wheel. That is very much time to come in. I mean, you can see that I'm struggling a lot. But up to that point, you know, lap 20, I was contemplating coming in on the previous lap, but there was still just about enough grip and my, my engineer was still saying, I still think it's on the crossover. Even now... I think he's literally just told me, I don't know, stupidly enough, he's just telling me that maybe it's time for Inters. Like, no, mate, it is definitely time for Inters. I can't keep this guy going in a straight line. So we're going to come in now for the green wall ties. But um, I, was, I was saying before, I think it's a miracle that we're actually here still. I'm very happy with the job we've been doing, considering the damage we've got. To be kind of in the realms of top five, I would say, behind the top three of, you know, uh, Joe, Bottas, Russell, and then Bottas is kind of in there. But I think Bottas just got taken out of the equation, actually, with that uh, extra pit stop. Because you can see we're out now in, uh, well, behind Science on the road. And everyone else that was kind of around us, Bottas, Norris, they pit a lot earlier. As now we see Sonoda having a trip off the circuit. The full safety car's out for the first time now. Despite all the carnage earlier, we actually haven't had a safety car so far on this race. It's taken Sonoda going off circuit. He's on the medium, so he will, for whatever reason, Alpha Tauri again, operationally, just being tragic this season, not making the most of their pace. And uh, he went off then, and that caused the safety car on the mediums. And it's meant that Russell has stayed ahead in third place, because he was also out on the mediums like Sonoda. So I would have jumped Russell in this in this round of pit stops, had it not been for this safety car helping Russell out, and kind of, you know, well, not helping Sonoda, but because of Sonoda, bring that out. So, uh, you know, that's a bit frustrating, but we're still here then. P4, lap 25. So 10 laps to go in this Grand Prix. And we're P4. And now intermediates could mean others are less likely to get, you know, a jump on us, you know, because of the conditions, you know, tiptoeing around off the court, especially off this hairpin. Maybe now uh, the, the pace advantage in the straight line may not, be an, uh, may not be an issue. Remember, the cooling issue, it's raining. I don't know. We've got damage to our car. Maybe the opening in the car, maybe, I don't know, maybe the rain's going to help cool the engine a bit now with the colder conditions. I don't know. I'm just spitting out what I feel like may be some factors in this Grand Prix as we go on now. Lap 26 onto green. There was a lap car in between uh, Russell and Sainz. He's gone out the window now, so it's still very much the Williams in control. Gran Yu Joe, despite having that horrendous five red lights, See, ever since he overtook me, he's been dominating this one and showing why he got pole position. Sainz in second, Russell third. Can we just maintain B4? That's what I'm hoping, is we have another safety car now in this race. And there's an issue behind us, I think, for Antonio Giovinazzi of the Red Bull. Sonoda as well, as well. Norris, three more DNS. We've got 11 runners now in this Grand Prix. This is getting berserk, and at this time... This is where it all went wrong. And maybe the race was too much of a madness for, for Codemasters, for the game to handle. Because at this moment where it froze, this is where my game crashed. It gave me the ego dumper and I lost the race. Um, So... That is why there have been no replay cameras. You may be wondering this whole time where, where are all these replays of all these crashes. We've had like, you know, eight of them so far. That hairpin pile up, you know, turn one replays. I had none of it because I, I didn't have any saveable replay cameras in the Grand Prix because I didn't make it to the end of this version of this race. But because we made it 28 whole laps, we had such a, it was such a good entertaining race in terms of how much chaos there was. And in terms of, I was very proud and happy of of my drive with this damage, you know, we may have done better if I had just redone the race and not had the damage. I probably could have even gone for the win, maybe, but because I want to stay true to this first version of this race, where I got the damage, fair and square, I got it, and I had to make the most of it, and I think I did make the most of it. I did very, very well, in my opinion, to be in P4 at that stage of the race. I redid the race off camera, and I was able to, with a bit of bodge work, get the same podium and 
where I finished. Behind me was a little bit different, but, you know, near enough to the big key players in this race, it was the same. So, it's unfortunate. It's the first time, I think, on this game cycle, in F1 2021, where the games crash like this midway through the race. We had quite a lot of these on last year's game in the back end around this time last year. So, I'm hoping that this is really not the beginning of, you know, a series of crashings every couple of races now with the game. We have seen it before, for whatever reason, as the game cycle goes on, the game gets more unstable, for whatever reason. I hope that's not the case, because this is a rarity on this game. It's the first time that's happened to me, but uh, it's a bit unfortunate. I hope you guys understand, though, my reasoning of redoing the race, but kind of just making sure the results were somewhat similar, because, like I said, I actually, I wanted to, you know, firm the fact that I got the damage. I didn't want to redo it and just basically almost cheat a good podium or maybe a win because I got the damage fair and square but I was also very happy with how I drove with the damage so that's where my thinking is on doing that so and also I wanted to show you what was a, a mental race you know with only 11 finishes basically in that one so uh, that that's why we've re redone it this way hopefully you guys understand that it's out of my hand obviously I can't control when the game crashes like this so it is what it is uh, it's the first time it's happened thankfully so far in the game cycle like I said so hopefully knock on wood this is one of the last last fewer times it happens, but uh, that is where we go, the go to, but the podium was the same. Grand Yu Joe his second race win ever in Formula 1, and Williams' first one in Season 5. Well done, Williams. Certainly showing what they're made of out there today. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky, wet conditions is really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's 10 times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. Williams have put in an incredible performance out on the track today. I'm glad all the hard work of theirs has finally paid off. It's a win that Williams needed for sure to kind of kick start their season. It's one that Guan Yu Zhou will be very happy with, kind of solidifying that he's doing a better job than Bottas so far this season. Sainz continues to just be there in the Ferrari, whereas his teammate keeps on just having no shows, no points, nothing to show for it. And Russell, again, also there in the McLaren. We're seeing these three be kind of champions of their three respective teams for ourselves. Uh, even with that P4, the damage, like I said, that's why I was very proud of the drive because we limited the damage and we're only now, uh, well, we, we brought the damage down to only one point between myself and Science. It could have been a lot worse. Science could have taken the lead of the championship and we could have been down in like P5 a fair few points off but we got no points here, but we did such a good job of getting that top four. So very, very happy with that. But uh, Guan Yu Zhou right up there in the thick of it now alongside Russell. So this is only heating up and getting closer and closer. Leclerc's not too far off the top as well but you know because we've only got these you know one champions in each team it means that you know for our team our reporter f1 we're looking quite comfy mclaren are close but they're not that close right now to be of concern but there's still a long way to go for 27 points to be bridged so let's not rest or you know rest on it but it's going well because myself and Leclerc are both performing we're both up there at the sharp end but very peculiar canadian grand prix bit of a shame uh with the game crash like i said so apologies guys but it's out of my hands, but hopefully you still enjoyed the episode nonetheless. Like, like I said, the footage was not lost. That race was not lost because, you know, the spirit of the race, the podium positions, and at least my P4 was, was retained with the bodge jumping I was able to do. So unfortunately about the rest of the drivers, but I could only do as much as I could really trying to emulate the same sort of results. So hopefully you guys understand that. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.